All right, we're live. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. This is Fake Sports Dynasties, and I'm excited about this because Dan Sagan is here. And if you haven't checked it out yet, I'm going to post a link right now, and I'm, I'll bring it on screen for people to see it. But he uh, is the inventor of the OOTP calculator. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to get into um, why he built it, how it works. And let me uh, let me pull it up here for anybody who hasn't seen it, and then drop the link in. All right, so here's here's the calculator, and I'll drop the link into the comments in the live stream. Do you want me to uh, do you want me to kind of go through it and uh, explain how it works, kind of thing? That would be great. Cool. All right. So um, uh, basically, should I just kind of follow along on your screen? Yeah, I can throw some numbers in there too if you want. Yeah, that would be perfect. Um, so basically, um, if you uh, scroll down a little bit and you have uh, you have the uh, kind of the positional skills, or rather the uh, like defensive skills, like range, error, arm for infield and outfield kind of thing. If uh, so, you at your top, you just select your scale that you want to use. Say if you use the twenty to eighty scale, that's my uh, that's my preferred one. And uh, you, uh, so if you want a height for, or if you want a rating for first baseman, you're going to put in the height there. And then you're just going to type in uh, all the ratings for your guy. Do you have, uh, do you have a guy in mind or are you just kind of making up numbers? We'll just, we'll just make up a guy, I guess. So, cool. so let's say we're doing it. So height, I guess that's the only, that's the first thing I wanted to touch on. You've got it here on, in the calculator. I went through your notes. One of the ones is, Height only affects first base rating. So that's right. I don't. I'm not sure exactly why it is, but um, it seems to only have an effect for first baseman. Um, okay. So even if you if you left it blank, um, the calculator would still work. It just uh, wouldn't generate a rating for first base. Interesting. Okay. But, so uh, if he's going to be a first baseman, does it matter mm -hmm. if we say what his catcher ability is? No, no. You can just leave it blank, or just uh, you know, he's probably got 20 for his ability yeah. in arm, but. Uh, you can leave it blank. You can put in 20 if you want. All right. And then, um, so infield range. So um, let's give him, let's give him kind of a low range. All right. Let's go like 40. Sure, yeah. He's a first baseman. 40, 40 is good for a first baseman. And then um, let's go, let's make him strong defensively. Okay. Yeah. Um, nice hands. I'm going to put in, um, I, I know his range is low, so this might not help him, but I'll put in a good arm because I'm just interested mm. to see what that does for third base potential. Yeah, yeah. Keep an eye on third really base. Arm. And then turn the double play. Let's just <laughs> not have him be too great there. Sure, pretty average. And then I was thinking maybe like as, as I was playing with it, I was um, kind of playing with the outfield options, mm -hmm. especially when I was looking at first baseman, looking at it saying like, okay, like what – what about those guys who sometimes you end up with a crowd at first base and you're thinking yeah. about, can you make this guy a corner outfielder? Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, let's, let's throw in just some, let's make him, let's make him decent out there. Sure. And then we'll still say he has a pretty good arm because he's, he's got the good arm for, for infield. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to hit submit. Yep. I think we got it all in there. Yeah. Let's see it. All right. So third baseman, solid third baseman, good left fielder, solid right fielder. Honestly, he could he could be anywhere except for shortstop. And yeah, catcher. yeah. I wouldn't throw him behind the plate. Wouldn't throw him at shortstop. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So I'm interested in talking about um, first base too, where you mm -hmm. know you see he's got a negative WAR. Right. Um, is that because? You know, would his numbers be so much better at third base because we gave him a pretty good error rating, we gave him a pretty good arm mm -hmm. that he's going to be able to deliver more value as a third baseman because of those strengths than at first? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, how uh, are you familiar with like the uh, positional spectrum that uh, that concept? Uh, I don't know if I am. Just like um, so, basically, there's a th I think it's like um, Bill James, who's like the you know grandfather of sabermetrics as we know it. Um, he kind of came up with this concept of the positional spectrum. So basically there's your super important high value positions like catcher and shortstop. And then there's your less important ones like first base or maybe the corner outfield spots. So basically how it works is just the more important ones uh, intrinsically provide more value to your team. So if a guy is 
say, an average left fielder, he'll provide a lot more value if he can play an average center fielder just because the position in itself is more valuable. So you see that in the calculator where a great first baseman still isn't as valuable as a decent third baseman just because on the positional spectrum, you know, first base is at the, you know, garbage end, whereas third base is, uh, it's actually a slightly above average in terms of value. It's a pretty, pretty decently valuable position. Right. Yeah. It's interesting to think about how you could use this as you think about your full lineup. And Mm. when you do have a situation where you have maybe more bats than you feel like you can fit in, Right. And still have solid defense where you can start to think about, okay, this guy could be good at third, but I got this other guy who's better at third, but his bat's not as good. This guy's going to get me a one mm-hmm. more at third base defensively and his bat. And then yeah. for somebody else at first base who maybe can't get you as much value on the defensive side, wherever else you might want to plug mm-hmm. them in. I guess first base is somewhere where they might do the least amount of damage. Right. Exactly. Cause if, uh, if you go back to the calculator and if you just put in like garbage ratings for infield, for example, yep. um, just like say uh, 35 across the board. Okay. You'll see, I, I, I don't know for sure. I'm just assuming that shortstop you'll be really bad. And so like your war will be like horrible. Let's, right. let's uh, see, see what happens. Just do yeah. these four. Let's see. Okay. It's going to be like negative one. Oh, it's not even, it's so bad. It's not even, okay. Try making like a, try throwing in like a 50 range. Oh, and this is because he's, no, he doesn't throw left. I was thinking that's why he didn't get a, so this is so bad. We're not even going to throw him in at third. Yeah. Yeah. That was actually a change I made to the calculator uh, yesterday after I saw, I saw the stream with you and your brother and you guys had the thing with the catcher where he was showing a rating of a 20, Yeah, but uh, he was still showing his war, which was like 0.9. So I was like, oh shit, that's not, that's not right. Oh, okay. Uh, so I, just, I just like blanked it out. If uh, if they are at like the bottom, you know, bottom of the pile, they don't even register a uh, a war anymore. So it's got to be at least a twenty five on the twenty to eighty scale to register okay. anything. Yeah, so try throwing in like a fifty for range. All right, and leave everything else alone. Yeah, because range is now going to be high enough that we mm-hmm. actually consider this guy for shortstop or third base. Hopefully, yeah. So you see, he's a twenty five overall at shortstop. And his ward's going to be negative 1.4. So you do not want to have this guy at shortstop. Right. And he's pretty bad anywhere on the infield. But first base, he's pretty solid. Even though it's still negative war, you know, because it's hard, it's hard to produce value at first base. But it's, you know, kind of the lesser of the four evils. It's the least bad option. Yeah, I want to play with this double play option here for a second. Because mm. one of the things I've often tried to do in the game, and I've I think this is something I could use for that is um, sometimes when you end up with too many first basemen um, I've looked at, well, who can I turn into a second baseman? Right. Um, if they don't have the range, but maybe you could get mm-hmm. them to be half decent. Mm-hmm. So that if I, just the double play option there is going to help bump them up there. Yeah. So there you go. It looks like out of 45 for a second baseman, that's slightly more valuable than a 70 first baseman. So, right, you know, still not great, still negative, but uh, not too bad. But yeah, let's if you want to get more bats in your lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, do you have um, a certain strategy you use when you're um, putting a lineup together? Like one of the things I often do in the game is I'm always looking at trying to be strong up the middle. You know, it's mm-hmm. like catcher, shortstop, second base, center field. Sure. Um, I usually don't like to sacrifice defense at third if Mm -hmm. I can, if it's close between that and a guy with some offensive upside and then, you know, kind of hide some of your maybe not as great defensive players, left field, right field, first base. Yeah. For me, I, uh, I like to do it based on either my pitching staff or what park I'm playing in. And, uh, so, I mean, ideally, I base my pitching staff based on the park I'm playing in, and then I base my defense off of that. Like, for example, um, my go-to save right now is my Marlin save. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with Marlin's park. It's pretty big. You know, not a lot of balls leave the yard there. Right. And, uh, you know, it's low altitude, so the ball's not going to be carrying or anything. And uh, if you look at the park factors, I think for home runs, it's like 0.8. So, like... 20% fewer home runs than in the average ballpark. So uh, based on that, I, I, uh, for my defense, 
I don't really worry that much about infielders because uh, I'm going to want fly ball pitchers because I can afford to have fly ball pitchers because that park's going to keep a lot of those potential home run balls from uh, f- prevent them from getting out of the yard. So, uh, so yeah, it starts with the pitching staff. I get some fly ball pitchers. And then with that, uh, I like to focus my defense on the outfield. So I think right now, uh, don't quote me, but I think I've got like a 70 overall center fielder and then 65 and left and 60 and right. Not that my infield is bad. I think I've got like they're probably 55s and 60s across the board, but uh, I really like to focus on, you know, kind of cater to my ballpark and cater to my pitching staff. So right now for my Marlin save, I've got, uh, got most of the focus on the outfielders. Got it. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to doing O's rebuilds and uh, mm-hmm. Camden yards. Definitely. You know, you want power pitchers or ground ball pitchers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Make sure I have a real strong infield, but I guess with, yeah, with like the Marlins, you can, put some good outfielders out there and you can have some pitchers who will give up some fly balls and they're going to stay in the park there versus uh, if you're playing in Camden yards. Yeah. Honestly, it was weird getting used to because uh, I've done Rocky saves in the past and I've done blue Jay saves in the past, both, you know, pretty hitter friendly ballparks. So going from that to looking for fly ball pitchers, it just felt weird, you know, like, you know, what, what would you want a fly ball pitcher for? But it's actually, it's actually worked pretty well. You know, we're on a yeah. budget because we're the Marlins, but uh, I think I think we're doing all right. I've never really been in the market, yeah, for for fly ball pitchers. And mm-hmm. what you know, I know you know, for example, like power pitchers are often pretty expensive. Yeah, you know, they cost you a lot to get. With fly ball pitchers, how you know easy were they to acquire? Honestly, I found some pretty good deals. I uh, admittedly, I haven't played the uh, I haven't played that sim in uh, in a week or two, so and you know, I sim pretty fast, so the names kind of go in one year and out, out the other. But um, uh, I had this one guy who's uh, his stuff was like uh, you know like fifty five or something, so it was okay. Uh, his control was really good; it was like sixty or seventy, and then his movement was just garbage and like movement, uh, you know and uh, as you might know, it uh, influences uh, ground balls. And so guys with higher movement are going to allow fewer home runs. And uh, so this guy was extreme fly ball with low movement, but he had really high control and decent stuff. And uh, I got him for just like some, you know, half star prospect. And uh, he was like, you know, two and a half stars, but he ended up putting like three and a half war for me. Nice. So, yeah. So maybe when you're playing in a, in a park where you can, uh, afford to go after the fly ball pitchers mm-hmm. um you can get a little more for your money in a trade um, yeah exactly so we got we got one comment and uh this is my brother actually he said he's surprised that a 25 shortstop would only be a minus 1.4 war um what was that was that the guy we just were yeah working? yeah honestly um when defensive ratings get that low, it's um, because, you know, total disclaimer, uh, the war values are kind of estimated. They're estimated based on, uh, you know, an analysis I did on like five or six simulated seasons. Uh, so the war is just an estimate. The ratings, that's like definitive, but the war is just a little bit of guesswork. Okay. But uh, the problem with that for lower rated guys you don't see anyone with you know like a 25 or a 30 or even a 35 defensive rating so i just kind of had to you know extrapolate a little bit from the set i had of guys who were between you know like 40 and 70 or 80 so uh realistically honestly uh it probably would be worse than 1.4 war but uh it's hard to say just because uh you never see guys who are uh, who are that bad playing shortstop yeah. So how did you, how does this work? I guess on the back end, what's happening there? You know, what did you use to build it? How long did it take? And and what exactly does it do? How, what are you using to calculate these things? Right. So um, the biggest thing is like the biggest clue is in the uh, player editor. So do you want to pull up uh, do you have OTP on your screen there? I don't. And actually don't have it on the laptop I'm on at the moment. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, but if you pull it, if you have it on yours, you could do a screen share too. Can I, uh, can I do that? Okay. That'd be dope. Yeah. Um, let me see. Share screen. Don't show these tips. Um, let me see. Can you see my screen right now? No, but, um, if you, let me see if I hit Hold share on. screen 
if it pops up. Nope, that's still mine. Hang on. I think I have to stop sharing my screen and then I've got yours now as an option. Uh, hang on one sec. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> in there. All right. Can you see it though? Yeah. All right. What if I, can you see it now? Can you see? Um, I can OTV see you. Screen? Number Perfect. 23, first base. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I just made a, uh, you know, this is me uh, in the game. I'm a, I'm a third baseman in this, uh, in this save. I just, um, so I set all my ratings, as you can see, just to 50 overall across the board. Just, you know, be as average as possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the biggest clue was in the editor here. Uh, as you can see, kind of the language that the game speaks is on this scale of 1 to 250. So okay. you'll see all these numbers here, they're like somewhere around 100. And that translates on the 20 to 80 scale to a 50. Um, so all I had to do is because you can, um, so I turned on hundred percent scouting, uh, for this saved. I'm just using this. I've got commissioner mode and everything on for here. Okay. Um, so what you have to do, just kind of manipulate these, uh, ratings. So for example, um, have a look at, first of all, first of all, the, uh, calculator assumes that players have maximum experience at the position. So that's the the most experienced, the most comfortable they can get at a position. So that would be 200 on the scale here. Okay. So that's kind of the premise of the calculator. Um, I'm not really a math guy, so I have a hard time explaining the exact process. But basically, uh, I would have a look at how much one of these ratings increase. So say if I increase the infield arm from 107 to whatever. So watch this, watch this third base rating here. It's at an 84 right now, but if I increase it to a 160, it goes up to 120. Nice. So basically okay. I see how much, uh, the position rating increases based on an increase in a single skill here. And, uh, I'm able to do some math and I'm able to come up, uh, with these formulas to calculate, uh, this resulting rating. So that 120 in, on the one to 250 scale ends up being uh, a 55 on the 20 to 80. So we've got their 55 rating. Got it. Okay. So basically after I get that one to 250 rating, I just have to translate that back into, well, first, first of all, I have to translate the 20 to 80 or whatever uh, scale you're using, translate that into the one to 250, calculate it using uh, the formulas that I generated. I've actually got the formulas uh here on my github you want it's, it's hard to interpret this chart here but basically that shows uh all the weights that each skill is assigned okay uh so yeah so you take so you take the input from the calculator um uh, the back end converts that into the 1 to 250 scale applies these weights and then just converts it back so really all the grunt work is done in this table right here. Everything else is just making it kind of user friendly. Got it. Okay. And you you mentioned at one point the experience. So you have it. It's assuming full experience. So if we were playing a game mm -hmm. um, and we did this, like we used your calculator and we were going to take this approach with a young player, like say somebody we just drafted, or we're going to throw them into rookie ball. Mm -hmm. We use your calculator. We figure out the position where they're going to you know have the most impact over the course of their career mm -hmm. one thing i'm not familiar with is how long it takes those experience points to rack up did you do oh. anything around that i actually didn't so i kind of i think it's around a full season at a position you generally you can generally gain full experience but i'm actually not really sure i thought it was around a season but um in my marlin sim I have this guy, um, this catcher, he's like, he's got like a, a 70 catcher ability and like 55 arm. So, uh, I'm just going to run this through my calculator. That should be, he should be a 70 overall as a catcher, but he's stuck at like a 60 right now. And he's been like that for, uh, he was a 55 like a year ago and he's gotten up to a 60. So he seems to be progressing really slowly. So it might depend on, um, personality ratings. Okay. I suspect. Um, but uh, yeah, short answer, I'm not entirely sure uh, how long it takes to get to that full experience. But uh, but yeah, I think somewhere around a season, maybe a little more. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's something I've 
often wondered, and I guess I could go in and kind of track that if I went into the editor mode and see how it's, you know, moving for a player, um, you know, as I've kind of moved guys up through the minors and wanted them to get as much, uh, you know, experience as possible to try to bump those ratings up at whatever position I'm trying to get them ready to play when they get up to the, uh, you know, to the big club. Right. Cool. Um, how long did this take you to build? Um, probably the biggest thing was figuring out how to calculate, uh, like these formulas that I'm talking about, like the whole back end thing. Um, that took, you know, once I kind of conceived of the idea, it took me, uh, you know, not actively, but like, you know, a couple of days of just kind of contemplating passively how I'm going to, you know, how I'm going to go about calculating these ratings. Um, but then once I had a, uh, I figured out the editor thing that, you know, if I convert them to this one to 250 scale, um, you know, it's very, uh, it's very quantitative, very mechanical. It's all laid out for me. Um, after that, it was, uh, it was actually pretty quick, probably, you know, no more than a day total doing the, doing the whole app, including like the, uh, you know, making it look pretty and that kind of thing. That was really like, I'm not a, I'm no front end developer so that was uh that was the toughest thing for me but um once i figured out the formulas it was just you know an hour maximum of uh just you know typing up some javascript code and um uh, and yeah maybe a few hours on the front end it uh, wasn't too hefty at all it looks good it does the job you know it's yeah amazing. i appreciate that that was um I, I basically just stole all you know the OOTP's whole uh, aesthetic they've got going there. Like I, I just straight up took their fonts and their background and everything, just because I figured, you know, they've already got uh, their look going for them. You know, why change it? But uh, I, yeah, I made sure to put a disclaimer. Right. You know, I'm not affiliated with OOTP or anything, so you yeah, don't get uh, sued or anything. Have you heard anything since you launched it from anybody with OOTP? No, no, I've. Uh, I, honestly, I've heard um, like just from the community and everything. I, I was uh, I didn't even think I'd hear from the community, but um, I've gotten lots of feedback from the community, and um, I'm really appreciative of, of that. But um, no, nothing from the developers or anything. I figure they probably don't care, especially because um, they're owned by uh, they got new ownership, right? Yeah, um, I forget what they're called, but it, I think it's some big corporation, so they probably they probably don't even care. Yeah, the inter it was interesting, all the feedback you got. I don't know if I've seen a post on the Reddit forums that's gotten that many upvotes. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was honestly crazy. Like, I posted it, and I figured I'd get, you know, maybe maybe a couple dozen uh, and, you know, a comment or two. That's how, that's how posts you usually do on there. But um, – and honestly, it started off kind of slow. And, uh, you know, I was super appreciative to hear anything, but um, – I think by the next day it was like, you know, 200 upvotes and like uh, over 50 comments. And it was uh, honestly like, I love the feedback because not that it was bad to begin with, but uh, just a bunch of little things that I've added since just taking the user feedback, making it uh, a little more user friendly, um, a little more intuitive, that kind of thing. But um, if, uh, you know, anyone, anyone who's watching right now or anyone who's going to be watching the, uh, uh, tomorrow or anything, feel free to hit me up. If you, uh, if you can think of anything that'll make the app more, uh, user-friendly, you know, any other features, uh, don't, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Cool. Yeah. I'm sure people will. Um, have you gotten, I guess two sort of parts to this question, either have you or others who've used it, um, what have you seen? Uh, have you had a chance to go like five, 10, 15 years in a guy's career after using this app to figure out where you might be able to best play them to deliver the most value? Have you seen how it's played out and how close, you know, it delivers on what you're calculating things to be? Like, um, you mean with like the war value and that kind of thing? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't really done uh, anything too extensive. Um, but one thing I did notice, um, I've kind of been using, uh, Nick Gonzalez. He's been my, uh, guinea pig for this experiment, uh, not intentionally, but, um, so when I first, uh, before I had the calculator, I tried to make Nick Gonzalez play, uh, first base. So okay. for, um, Nick, Gonzalez, he's just like a minor league guy, but, um, so he's like five foot 10. And, uh, as we now know, height matters an awful lot for first base. 
And I tried to make him play first base just because, you know, my infield was full everywhere else and he had pretty good uh, infield skills. So I tried, I tried him at first, but um, uh, so that didn't pan out. So that was before I knew how the ratings worked. And then the second iteration for Gonzalez was uh, this is after I had the, uh, after I had the calculator, yep. I tried making him play shortstop because he was going to be a uh, 45 shortstop and I think a 60 second baseman. And um, so the original war calculation I had, which was uh, actually, I think this was before I published the calculator, but I had it, uh, you know, kind of a beta version or whatever. Um, so the war calculation was different. And uh, it told me that Gonzalez was going to be more valuable at shortstop, even though his rating was only a 45, like his infield range was a 60, which, uh, you know, Anyone who plays OTP, they'll tell you, nah, like 60 isn't enough. You need at least a 65 to have a shortstop. But uh, I tried it anyways because my math had said he would be, you know, more valuable as a shortstop. And I was dead wrong. Like he, um, do you know, um, so zone, I think it's zone rating, uh, yeah. ZR in the, in the defensive stats. So that basically shows how many runs above or below average you are at a position. And his was like, negative 15 by the end of the year just like for for starters he didn't have full experience that short to begin with at the start of the year okay. but even even so even at 45 by the end of the year he was just like completely tanking my infield defense and uh so that's you know that's uh not exactly a success story from for my calculator but uh an important lesson in uh you know kind of opened my eyes um when it comes to the war calculation so i was able to uh, take a different process, take a different, uh, uh, you know, approach to it. And, um, I like this one a lot better. Uh, I actually haven't tested it out too much, but, um, you know, here's to hoping that it, uh, it holds up a little better than my original version. Yeah. So if people are testing this out and they have feedback, what's the best way for them to send it to you? I, I we've got your Twitter handle up there on the screen. Yeah. So that's Instagram too. Yeah. Twitter. Uh, that's my Twitter and my Instagram. And, um, Honestly, I'm on Reddit more often than anything. Uh, you can find me at u uh, slash dangraphs. So it's like fan graphs, but uh, Dan. Cool. Um, or you can, uh, do you want me to, I can drop in the chat here. Uh, oh, cool. Um, we got some stuff rolling in in the chat too. Here, let me. Uh, how, do I, uh, how do I see the chat on the side here? Um, I can do that. Hold on, let me. Uh, I think I can get it to pop up for you. Oh yeah, perfect. Um, okay, it's not letting me type anything, but um, just you slash Dan Graphs on Reddit. And um, yeah, either that or I'm on Instagram a lot. Um, I don't post on Twitter or anything, but um, I check in every once in a while. So uh, yeah, um, reach me anywhere on uh, any one of those three social medias. Cool, I'll throw... Um... In the description on the YouTube video afterwards, I can go in and I can throw your contact information there in the bottom oh, if you want. Cool. cool. So there's some comments right here. So here's one about the catcher lagging behind. Um, work ethic and intelligence might play a part. Mm -hmm. from, and then uh, the same commenter posted something that they pulled from the forums. I guess it's an answer from an OOT, OOTP developer. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's like the... OG OTP guy. So yeah, I think if I recall correctly, this guy had pretty low intelligence, which okay. uh, if you think about it, you don't want a dumb catcher. So that does make sense. Yeah. I know um, uh, on my original Reddit thread, there was some speculation that um, uh, adaptability might have an impact on um, uh, like positional development, but um, it was confirmed that it doesn't. Okay. So adaptability doesn't matter for, um, you know, changing positions or anything, but it sounds like, uh, especially if it's coming right from the top from Marcus, it, uh, yeah, it sounds like intelligence and work ethic, uh, definitely have a hindrance on there. And here's another one. It might be manager ratings, mm -hmm. teaching fielding. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I don't do, I don't really look too much into my managers to be honest, uh, especially minor leaguers. I think I just have my assistant GM do that. But, um, you know, I'm more, I'm more just focused on, like, excuse me, the um, scouts and the trainers and uh, the ones that I see more of an intrinsic impact. But, yeah, um, that definitely could be part of it. And, 
I don't, I might be able to incorporate that even into the uh, calculator and like um, for like work ethic or intelligence, if we were able to, uh, you know, figure out how to quantify that in terms of like exactly how slow does it make the development, then, um, you know, that kind of thing should, could be, uh, could definitely be considered. Yeah. You know, one of the other areas, this comments up on the screen right now makes me think of this, but there's so much on the coaching and manager side of things that I've tried to figure out over time playing the game, mm -hmm. like how much your minor league coaches and managers matter, yeah. not just in the performance of that current minor league team, but more importantly, if you're, you know, trying to build a franchise, how the certain personalities of those managers and coaches, the minor leagues might affect development. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's something, something I've tried, uh... to, tried to figure out and haven't yet, but I've just played with it a lot. Yeah, that's something I've uh, looked into a little bit recently. Um, just uh, at least the development influence rating. Like um, one thing I don't like about uh, like coaches for OTP is that there's not like specific ratings. There's like their um, reputation or whatever. But uh, for the most part, they won't tell you you know how good they are at teaching, hitting, or or that kind of thing. But they they do show you how much of an influence they're um, they have on development, which. Uh, which I've been paying more close attention to because uh, for most of my coaches, I would just kind of hire whoever has an okay reputation and is pretty cheap, but uh, definitely something I've been paying attention to more. Yeah. I think, I think my brother was talking about this recently on one of his tutorial videos or a live stream just about, you know, I guess it's sort of a cheat, but if you go in and you, uh, you know, in the editors, then you can see yeah. a lot more or in commissioner mode, mm -hmm. you can see a lot more about yeah. the coaches. I'd love to see the developers bring some more of that forward in the game so that you could, you know, learn more yeah. and more about some of the coaches before you hire them. Yeah. I wish I, I wish I remember where I saw this probably somewhere on Reddit, but um, somebody suggested that um, you have like, um, you know, a scouting report, but for coaches. So you know, obviously for, uh, you know, player scouting, it's, you know, an estimate of what their ratings are, you know, it'll change based on the scout. So what, um, what this person suggested, uh, was that the assistant GM is kind of like your coach scout. So the ratings for the coaches are uh, judged by the assistant GM. So if you have an assistant GM, who's better at, um, you know, I think, I think they compared it to like a hiring process, right? So, uh, so that kind of thing. And I think that was a great idea because as far as I can tell, all the assistant GM does is, you know, complain when I make supposedly bad trades. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, my brother and I were chatting about this the other day. Um, sometimes we don't even spend the money to have an AGM. Just put that money somewhere else in your budget. If you feel like, you know, trades better than they're going to tell you. Honestly, just spend the money on them. Honestly, all the assistant GMs do is bring down my spirits. They're telling me, ah, oh, I don't know, boss. You know, I'd ask for, I'd ask for slightly more. And it like, literally that seems like it's all they do. And I might, can, I might want to consider just not, not having, uh, not having an assistant GM because they, more than anything, they just, you know, bug me. It's amazing to what it takes how little it takes to make them happy. They'll ask you, they'll tell you, Oh, I'd ask for slightly more. And you could throw in like a 28 year old yeah. double a ball player. Who's never going to make it. And they're like, mm -hmm. sounds great. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Honestly, I've gotten to the point where I just like completely, completely ignore them. Yeah. Projections. That's um, that's actually something I was working on today. Um, right now I've just got kind of a, uh, kind of a spreadsheet going, but um Right now, I'm uh, I'm like in I'm in school right now, but I'm on my winter break, so uh, so I'm hoping that um, maybe even by the end of this uh, this calendar year, I hope to have at least something up and up and running on the site. Nice, you got to set up, uh, you know, a GoFundMe or Patreon or something, and just make this your full time job. Everybody can oh, start a few bucks and just pay I, you to become the developer. Yeah, I I totally would, but. Um, Honestly, I'd take a couple bucks just so I can have like an actual domain name because right now I'm uh, it's like a dot Heroku app uh, name, so it's just like unnecessarily long. So I'd just take like even if I could just get like a twenty dollar donation so I could get a real domain name, that would uh, that would be dope. But uh, I mean, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this kind of thing to uh, to make bank. I just want people to you know be better educated on their uh, on their OTP saves. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, if I, if I could though, you know, I would, you know, this would be the dream doing this for a living. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Um, I mean, who knows what, where this game's going to go, yeah. um, what other games the company's going to develop, mm -hmm. you know, what opportunities there are for people related to it. Um, we had a couple more coming in. Um, here's one about assistant GMs mm -hmm. should help or hinder. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That would be, uh, that would be good. If, um, I don't know if, I don't know if anyone here plays 2k, but, um, that's, uh, that's actually a thing. There's like badges that, um, uh, I think it's an assistant GM thing, but badges that your, uh, that your personnel can have that will influence that, you know, that exact thing. Like, uh, if they have a certain badge or a certain rating, then, uh, you know, they'll, uh, help influence your players and maybe get some players to sign for less, that kind of thing. So yeah, that would be, I think that's definitely something uh, OTP should expand on is the like coaching logic. And uh, that's definitely a, a good use for an assistant GM. Yeah. There's, there are things like that in football manager. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. played that at all. No, I, I haven't. I played around with that really for the first time this year. And um, I did you know, I know a, a, just a little bit about soccer um but is, I that, a, is that like game. an otp developments game like the hockey manager or is that like separate separate okay um and it's huge i mean the the community around that game is enormous yeah and if you go on um the latest version just came out within the last couple months mm -hmm. if you go on like twitch or That's football you, like like uh like soccer right yeah exactly okay, yeah, yeah. so um and it the you know the following for that game is huge if you go on either twitch or youtube and search for videos there's people with you know tons of tips and tutorials mm -hmm. and lots of people watching them but there's a lot of stuff in that game i'd love to see a little more of in otp mm -hmm. with you know what your assistant coaches what influence they can have um you can have conversations and team meetings and mm -hmm. other things that kind of influence yeah. it um I've seen people bring this up in some of the Reddit forums for OTP. If you could, you know, talk to your pitcher. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause if like you think about it, they have like, you know, there's your inbox in, in OTP, but it's only one way. Like, you know, your players can talk to you, but you can't, uh, you can't talk to them. It's just this one way street, which uh, in, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big 2k guy and in 2k in the GM mode, you know, it's, um, it's pretty cool. Cause they actually have like this, uh, like these cut scenes and everything. Um, but yeah, you can like have meetings with your players and just like check up on them and that kind of thing. And it's, uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, obviously overall, you know, of, of any sim game that I've played, OTP is far and away the best one out there. But, you know, there are definitely things like you mentioned from football manager that they could consider and, uh, you know, other, uh, other sims like 2K and, um, you know, whatever else. Have you done the hockey simulator that uh, OTP developments? Made? <laughs> no, I actually haven't. It's um, I'm probably, you know, I'm definitely an anomaly when it comes to Canadians, but I, I don't, I, I don't, uh, I never really played hockey. I don't watch hockey. It just, um, I've just really been more of a baseball, uh, basketball kind of guy. So I haven't, um, I haven't, I, uh, I've played, you know, uh, I played a little bit of NHL, um, but, uh, but no, I never got into the, uh, never gotten to the, um, uh, franchise, uh, hockey manager. Yeah. I haven't, um, I haven't checked it out. Um, but I, my brother's done some Sims with the last version with number six yeah. and seven just came out. Nice. Um, but I do want to check that out cause it looks like there's some stuff in there from seeing some of his videos that might carry over a little bit from football manager with the way you can do tactics and things, you know, how your players enter the zone and just some interesting sure. things. Yeah. Um, how long have you been playing out of the park? Um, so I started, uh, do you ever play MLB manager? Like the, um, the old mobile version that they had. Yes. I think that was the version I played that was, you know, you know, it was, you only had one minor league team, I think. And it was just not quite as advanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was, um, yeah. So like before, uh, OTP go, which I don't know, have, they haven't released that yet. Have they? Not um, that I know of. No, but um, so before that, there was a. Uh, it was just called MLB Manager for um, like an iPhone game or like uh, Android or whatever. Yeah. So I started playing that when. Um, so I'm in my fourth year of college now. So I started playing that in uh, in grade ten. So like almost six years ago. 
in uh, sorry, 10th grade for, for those, uh, those Americans out there. Um, so yeah, it would have been, uh, 2015 that I started playing, uh, the, um, MLB manager. So that was just, uh, you know, the mobile game and it was just, it was just the free version. So I didn't get the full experience, but, uh, but you know, I loved it. It was, it was great. Um, you know, everything I was looking for in a game cause I'd been playing, I'd been playing MLB the show pretty much, you know, since I could walk. Yeah. Um, or since, since they had the game anyways, which was, you know, around since I could walk, but, um, but I liked, uh, I liked the OTP a lot better because you didn't need to play the games and, uh, it was a lot more in depth in terms of, uh, cause they had, um, the first thing I noticed for MLB managers, they had all of the minor league players, all the minor league teams, all the minor league players. Cause in MLB, the show, you just have uh double A and triple A teams. And okay. half the players are like fictional players anyways. But um, the MLB manager that uh, the one that I was introduced to, it had literally, you know, full minor league systems, all the players, you could go down to rookie ball and you'd see, you know, real guys. But um, so that would have been 2015. And uh, I just kind of forgot about it for a while. And then um, my first year of college, I, uh, uh, I actually bought the full version. I can't even remember where, um, cause I didn't really know about it at the time. I can't remember where I found out about it, but, um, I think it, I, I got an ad for it and went on sale for like 10 bucks or something. And, uh, you know, that's 10 bucks I ever spent. I've been uh, buying it every year, every year since. Yeah, man, that's a great hook when, uh, they do that discounted one. They're doing one now, I think like 50 oh, yeah. off like a nice. winter or like holiday sale, yeah, like a boxing day kind of thing. And, um, that's actually how I ended up getting into uh, football manager for the first time oh, yeah. after seeing that game for years and thinking like, all right, maybe sometime I'll get into this one. Mm -hmm. um, they actually did a thing, I guess in anticipation of the new version coming out a couple months ago, they let, they, uh, they had the m most recent version before that they made it free. So nice. I just downloaded that and got sucked nice. in and I'm sure I'll hand them my money to get the new version at some mm -hmm. point. Here. Yeah. That game has been around for a while, hasn't it? I think it's been around for yeah years and years. I don't yeah, because I think um, I think that was the game that uh, so like Marcus, the um, creator of OTP. I was um, uh, I read this interview that he did, and I think it was uh, Football Manager that he got his inspiration from because he's he was um, he's from Germany, and uh, yeah, that fifty percent will get you. But, uh, I think mine was like seventy five percent off. Um, but yeah, so Marcus, he's from Germany, and you know, obviously baseball isn't very big there, but uh, football, like soccer, is huge everywhere in Europe. And um, so he like decided to create this, uh, you know, basically football manager, but for baseball. So I thought that was, uh, I thought that was pretty dope. I think it was football manager that was his inspiration. I'm guessing it might have been just because mm. it's the one that's been big so long, and it's, it's yeah. be especially it seems to be huge in Europe. Right. Um, where so. Have you spoken with him before, or do you just read some of uh, what he writes? No, no, I haven't. That would be uh, that would be sick if I could. But um, he's uh, like he, he you know he pops up on the OTP forums every once in a while, and um, he'll show up on um, like the OTP developments. Um, they do streams and stuff, and uh, like he does, he usually does like the introductions to the new games. Like he'll do like uh, the not like a trailer, but they'll usually do a live stream. Uh, going in depth about the new features so he'll he'll always be doing that one but um uh i mean since he sold it to uh whoever whoever bought otp i don't i don't know it sounds like he's still gonna be somewhat part of the organization but i think he may be uh less involved unfortunately those guys have been, there were two of them it was marcus and there, there's another guy right there were kind of two of them that have been at it for a long time Probably. Um, I'm, I'm mostly familiar with Marcus just because he's kind of the face of the game, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure he didn't do like the whole thing alone. I'm sure there was. Um... Yeah. A bunch of people, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But no, I mean, they've been doing it for years, so I'm sure at some point maybe they are ready to just, you know, <laughs> do other things. It's gotta yeah. be an enormous amount of work every year. Yeah, absolutely. But um one thing in terms of just uh, Lucas, okay. Lucas, so that's it's Marcus and Lucas. Yeah, he's probably German too, eh? That sounds like a German name. Might be. But um, yeah, they're just in terms of sports sims in general. I'm uh, I'm a little disappointed that there isn't much of a basketball one 
just because uh, you know I'm a bit, like I mentioned I'm a big NBA fan, but um, yeah, oh, man, just have to have like an NBA version of OOTP would be like the dream, which is like so. Like honestly, like I've considered trying to develop that kind of thing, but uh, so if anyone's out, if anyone out there is interested in seeing uh, an OOTP for basketball, let me know. And if uh, you know if you're a developer or anything, you know maybe we can uh, we can work on something. I'm sure you'd have a huge market for that. I haven't seen one either. It seems like those are both, you know, mostly video game console. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like 2 2K does do a good job, but uh, you know, it's more about the gameplay. And um, there's uh, there's this one website. It's like Basketball GM, um, where it, it's all right. It's not quite on OOTP's level, but I'd say it's the closest thing. Yep, yeah, that's the one. Uh, I'd say it's the closest thing to uh, OOTP, but. Um, you know, I'd be interested in seeing that, but expanded. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I know the creator. I don't know him by name. I know he's um, Dumb Matter on Reddit. He's. Uh, you know, I've, I haven't reached out to him or anything, but um, you know, now that I think about it, that might be a good guy to reach out to because he's done a ton of good work over there. But I'd love to see, uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit expanded. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the basketball, just with the, mm -hmm. you know the D league now and yeah. then, you know, scouting around the world plus yeah. just the college side of the game. Yeah. Cause like my favorite thing about OTP is that they have like all the international leagues and everything. So like yeah. if they could have like, uh, you know, the basketball, you know, this, uh, theoretical basketball version, if it had like, you know, Euro league or like, um, the Australian league or like the WNBA, like that would be, that would be pretty dope. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Um, Kenneth said, isn't baseball uniquely suited to the GM mode with all the minor leagues and enormous player pool? Um, yeah, like you're not wrong, but um, I think there's still a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of fun to be had with basketball because, you know, like, uh, like you said, Mike, there's, uh, there's the D league. So there's, you know, every, with the exception of like maybe one or two teams, everyone has at least one minor league team. Uh, plus, you know, there's college. That's kind of like basketball's minor league and, Sure, you don't get the development influence, but uh, there there is you know an enormous player pool of basketball if you include you know college and international and even just the even just the D league. Yeah, I think I can think of ways. Kind of any of the major sports could be interesting to mm -hmm. be a GM for because they each have their own intricacies. Um, I was talking the other day about you know I love with soccer how there's promotion and relegation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we don't have that really in any other sport where if you suck, you move down a league. Yeah. Uh, or just how much how amazing it must be, you know, to be a fan of a team and to get promoted. Right. Uh, right. So, so like the whole like teams get promoted? Yeah. So oh, damn. you know, you'll you know, you can move up the tiers. Like for, for example, in um, you know, in the UK, you know, the way you can move up um to the Premier League. Um, you know from the, the champions league below it, the, um, I, I forget them all. There's like four tiers. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can kind of move your way up from the, the bottom two up to the championship league to the premier league. Um, and just in other sports, I mean, I, I was talking about this, I think on the stream yesterday or the day or, uh, or uh, last week, just, I can't even imagine that in like baseball. That if, would be, um, you know, awesome to see though. Like, you're, even you're, if they had like an option for that for OTP, that would there be, is an option in there. Somebody there? brought it up. There's a way to set it up. Yeah, I've seen it before in the settings. There's okay, you can customize it. Okay, that's I pretty, can't even imagine the way, like how much of a loop that would throw things <laughs> into here in the U.S. and Canada if we did that with uh, with baseball. If you think about just the way, like I can't even I can't even imagine Triple A mm. teams getting promoted to MLB. Yeah. And, and whoever the worst team was getting knocked down. That would be sick. Or just like, you know, theoretically just like disband all of affiliated baseball. Everyone's just like becomes an independent team. And then, so like, you don't have to worry about, you know, getting your best players stolen from your parent club or anything. That would be, that would be yeah. wild. I would love that. And I mean, it's cool the way it works as I got used to playing football manager a little bit. Um, you know, the way, if you're, one of the clubs further down the rungs and you become just this developmental machine. You're almost like a minor league because oh, yeah. you're developing your players. They don't want to stick around anymore because they want to be up in one of the top one or two tiers mm -hmm. and you sell them to other 
teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you take that money and you put it back into your, your franchise and you're trying to move your way up the rungs. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just an interesting way, you know, completely different way to do it, but you still have those clubs that are developing players the way almost like a minor league team would be developing players. Yeah. Instead of somebody owning their rights, you're selling them off. Yeah. I mean, I don't know much about like the history of minor leagues, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's like totally a theory. And I'm sure someone could fact check this immediately, but like, it wouldn't surprise me if like, that's how minor league started in baseball, you know, just had these, you know, low tier teens that were great at development, but not so great at winning ball games. And, uh, you know, maybe that's how minor league started. Uh, maybe I'm completely off there, but, uh, you know, like it, it almost makes sense, you know, for, uh, for soccer to run it that way. But, you know, I just love the idea of having teams get promoted and demoted. That's uh, that's pretty sick. Yeah. I know I've read about it too with baseball and how kind of some clubs started to, to develop their own farm system. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say it was back in, you know, like, I don't know, forties, fifties. I'm not sure what, what they did before that, but yeah, I do, you know, you would hear about um, players just playing independently somewhere and somebody mm-hmm. would see them like the Yankees or whatever would right. discover Babe Ruth or whatever mm-hmm. it was um, and, and buy them from a team that was not in major league baseball. Right. Like I know um, uh, back when Babe Ruth played in the minor leagues, whenever he did, he, um, uh, he played here in Toronto. There was, um, so Toronto had a uh, baseball team called the Maple Leafs. And um, apparently he hit his uh, like first professional home run in, um, in whatever, uh, whatever the stadium was here. But um, so there must've been some sort of, uh, some sort of minor leagues back then. It might've been, um, uh, you know, unaffiliated, like independent type situation, but, um, but yeah, so they must've been around. Um, I think, um, uh, what's his name that, brought, have you seen 42? No, haven't seen no. it. Okay. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but, uh, like the, whatever, whoever the exec was that brought, uh, Jackie Robinson into the league, I'm pretty sure he was the one who kind of, uh, started like the, like formal, like affiliated, uh, minor leagues like I'm, I'm pretty he, apparently he just had like uh, a bunch of teams just like had them play against each other and that kind of thing I'm pretty sure that's how it worked but he was um that yeah I want I want to say that was probably around like the 40s all right the, the yeah Bra- yeah Branch Ricky that's uh that's him yep oh we Pat Ben beat you by 30 seconds tough one I was thinking Branch Ricky but I couldn't be wrong mm-hmm. Didn't want to throw yeah. it out there. No, that's 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 fair. <laughs> but um, no, no, that yeah, it'd be interesting to get into OOTP though and start restructuring things. Um, yeah, and start, you know, that actually be fun to do a stream about sometime. Is to you know kind of do a live live stream and do a screen share and restructure it so that teams could get promoted and relegated. Yeah, that would be sick. I'm sure. Honestly, like with what OODP has done, there's probably so many features that I just like don't know about because I haven't tried them. But like, I mean, like you said, apparently this is a thing where teams can get demoted. And I like, I, I really need to just have my OTP zoom up a little. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, Pat, you're forgiven for not being uh, quick enough on the trigger there if you're uh, deep into the off season. Yeah, fair of enough. Fake Orioles. No spoilers though, man. <clears throat> I want to watch your next video and see what happens. Um. Hey Dan, yeah, thanks just for like, doing this, man. I really appreciate it. This has been yeah, super absolutely. interesting. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Just you know, anytime, anytime you want someone to talk to you on this uh, on the stream, let me know. I'm uh, I'm always game. Awesome. I will put your contact info in the um, description for the video in case people want to uh, get in touch. I've already got the link in there um, in the YouTube description for the calculator. I'm excited to see the projections machine. Cool. Yeah, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned in the next uh, next couple of days, next couple of weeks. Awesome. Oh, here's the, uh, before we go, here's how you uh, can change it so that people get promoted and demoted. League settings. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've players. seen that before and uh, I never really knew what that meant, but um, thank you, Mim. That's, Everybody uh, can go play with this <laughs> and report back, man. Yeah, I, gotta, I absolutely will. Uh, um, and he says, thanks for the calculator and the cool interview guest. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate uh, that. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having interest in the calculator. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's, uh, that's what I'm out here for. 
All right, man. Well, I, I really appreciate it. Good luck with uh, the rest of your winter break and your uh, your baseball work before you get back to school, man. Cool. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, take care. All right. You too. Take it Bye. easy. Bye. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I really uh, appreciate Dan coming on and, and talking about uh, his calculator. I'm excited to play with it some more. And um, if you guys have other topics you want to see on uh, the streams, other people who you think would be good guests, definitely uh, post a comment and let me know. And thanks for checking this one out. And I'll see you guys next time.